Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a Welsh one-way ANOVA using Microsoft Excel. This video will focus on how to calculate or perform the test, not so much on if you should. There are many tests to compare different means across categories, and this is just one of them. I'll leave a link to this Excel file uh, on my website, for which the link is in the description. and. Uh, on the website you can also find some more information about alternative tests and a little bit about which ones might be better um, but the Wells test is often uh, one good test to actually use. Now I have my data um, available the locations are one two or three so those were three locations they were actually Diemen, Haarlem and Rotterdam three cities in the Netherlands and the grades is my skill um, variable so the grade that the students actually gave the course on that particular location. I start off by also writing down that I have three categories as my number of categories. Then the first thing to calculate is actually the mean for each different category. So I can do that by using the average if function. Um, it's going to look in the location, my categories. Uh, it's going to check if it matches the category that's listed over here. And then it's going to calculate the average of the scores in column B, which are my grades. I can then simply copy paste this down and then I have the average within each of the three categories. The next thing is to calculate for each score the difference with its corresponding category mean and then square those results. Now I've done that actually in column C and it looks like this. It actually checks if the cell might be empty. Uh, if so it doesn't do anything and otherwise it's going to do exactly what the formula says to do. It looks at the value, the 20, and then subtracts from that something known as a VLOOKUP function. So it's going to look up the category, which is over there, in this table, which is these, and then it's going to return the second column of that table. So this is the first and that's the second column, so 2, and then 0 for a range lookup to be set to false so that it only uses exact values to be found. I close all of that and then square the result. Now notice I'm using a semicolon. Um, your system might be using a comma to separate variables. I can then simply copy paste this down, Control C or double click on the autofill handle and it scrolls all the way down. Notice that the range of the table is between dollar signs that prevents it from moving when I copy paste it. Alright, step three is then to determine the counts for each of these categories. So similar as average if, there's also a count if. Simply going to count in the category, the column A, uh, and how often then category 1 actually appears. And I can copy paste this down, and that gives me the, uh, the sample sizes of each category. The sample variances uses are column C. It's simply the sum of all of those, so I can use now sum if. Um, again, if in column A uh, it matches the number 1, then sum the column C, and then divide that by the number of items in that category minus 1. That's this complicated looking formula up here, and that's exactly this in Excel. I can copy paste this down again. So those are my variances per category. Then we calculate the so-called weights, which is the sample size divided by the variance. Now we have both of those, so it's a simple matter of saying, well, this one divided by that one, and copy-paste those down as well. Now you might notice that the total of these doesn't sum up to 1 or 100%, so we adjust it by doing so, so we are going to simply say where our adjusted weights are going to be the original weight divided by the total. So that's exactly this formula. Again using dollar signs because I want this total not to move when I copy paste it down. Just for completion there's the sum just to check if it's actually going to be um, heading up to 1. We can then determine the overall weight by using the sum product, and that's this. We're going to multiply each of these with the corresponding average of these, and that's what sum product exactly does. We can then determine our lambda. A lambda is 1 minus h, 
squared and then divided by the sample size of the category minus 1. We have all of these uh, data points so we can simply say 1 minus h square the result and divide it by the sample size which was all the way over here and minus 1. Again, copy-paste is down, and the lambda is then simply all of those added up. We can then finally calculate the Cochrane chi-square statistic. Now, this is being done by this formula. You multiply the weights, the unadjusted weights, by the average of the category minus the weighted average, and square the result. We have again all of these, so it's going to be the weights, the unadjusted weight, so that one multiplied by the average, which was all the way up here, minus the average, the weighted average, and then square the result. Now that's just the Cochrane chi-square test. Um, I've actually explained this one also in another video and some of those results. Now the adjustment for Welsh is actually by taking the number of categories minus one plus two times this fraction times that lambda. So that can easily be done. We already have our k values all the way up here. We hard coded that minus one and then using the k minus two over k plus one and multiplied by the lambda that we calculated earlier. The Welsh F statistic is then simply the Cochrane test statistic, the 20.911, divided over that adjustment. As for the first degrees of freedom, it's simply k minus 1, so number of categories, which was in uh, I5, minus 1, so I have 3 categories minus 1 equals 2. The second degrees of freedom slightly more complicated. Again, the number of categories squared, minus 1, divided over 3 times the lambda, and finally, we can then calculate the significance value by using the F distribution function. I want the right tail, give it the F statistic, the first degrees of freedom, and the second, and it will spit out 0 0.00054. This is below the usual threshold of 0.05, so normally we would then reject the null hypothesis and state that at least two of the categories are significantly different in the population, or that uh, location has a significant influence on the average grade that the students gave. Now, uh, you might notice I also made a user-defined function that can actually do the work for me so that I don't have to repeat it every time. So if you download this uh, Excel file um, and you enable the macros, you can also make use of that function. Alright, I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.